Hey budding lawyers, welcome to the podcast. Today we are going to have a chat with Mr. Ashutosh Singh. Ashutosh is a graduate from Institute of Law Nirmal University Ahmedabad and a former employee at Sri Ram General Insurance Company Limited. So, Ashutosh, what's up? How are you? I'm fine, Prasanna. Now you tell. How are you doing? I am also doing fine. Uh these COVID situations and other stuff are quite uh, crazy times nowadays, but anyway <laughs> things are going fine uh, at least we must not complain we are on the privileged side a bit <laughs> people are suffering more that's so true yeah we lies extreme hmm okay so um insurance sector um how uh, how did you get interested in this sector uh, was it like uh, i did you had done many internships uh, in this sector and that that's why you plan to work in that sector uh, i guess no uh, i was insurance sector was completely alien to me because uh, i have you know i'm a student from constitution stream i have my honors from constitution and okay. then post my graduation i have have you know pursued my diploma from media laws so i i had very limited knowledge when it comes to insurance so maybe that's why it uh, you know i find i found this this sector a bit interesting because i had no knowledge about it just from the just a basic knowledge so maybe that's that's found me that that that's what i found interesting and i get into it. so of course it it was a whole adventurous journey throughout hmm so uh so during your college days you were not that interested in it right yeah hmm. but my uh, my, my yeah. sole focus was towards this uh, studies and judicial examination hmm so why didn't you uh, take up any job related to in like in that sector maybe as a researcher somewhere or you know or start studying rigorously for judiciary exams why did you opt for this job I have I studied for judiciary exams. I I wrote UP Judiciary 2018 exams and luckily I have cleared pre and mains and then I went to reach till the interview stage and then I missed the final seat from some 13 marks. Oh. So post that thing, you know, that kind of a pause came in my career and thought now now what? Because see, uh, to be very frank, judiciary exams are not regular in our country. Uh, you never know that when the next exam is going to happen. Unlike UPSC exams or other competitive exams, which are fixed, and everyone is aware of the fact that okay, if you want, if you miss a bus at a one for a once, you will get the another one. But uh, judiciary is a bit different uh, stream when it comes to examination. So at that point of time, I I saw as I as I sat and I you know thought about it. What what would be what what next? So then I got to know my friends were there in the insurance sector and. so i got to know that okay there is a certain thing called in house counsel where you need, you need to look all the law related affairs of a company general insurance companies so uh, there i i found that there was a vacancy in the company and i applied and then i get into it and then of course the, how how did I, you get there like how was the recruitment process see it was solely interview there there were three three interview stages first it was being uh, taken by hr and then from by the state head and then the national head so it was a three stage and basically they ask the questions related to your law they don't they might not ask you anything alien to you they will ask you the questions related to contract and you know constitutions constitution and uh, civil provisions and consumer laws so whatever you have studied throughout your five year law program the same questions would is going to be asked in the in the do they don't treat like okay you are new in this sector so you know we will showcase our knowledge and how experienced we are and so it, it's not like that so they are very welcoming when it comes to any new law grad graduate who wants to enter into any new sector they are very welcoming and they are very helpful okay so did you observe any difference in behavior of the person who is recruiting uh when they come across a student who has passed out from an nlu and the one who has not passed to an nlu see this is a matlab okay fine uh, this nlu and non nlu is all together a very different debate 
ओके आई गेस एट एट द एंड व्हाट मैटर्स इज हाउ मच यू हैव गेन्ड थ्रू आउट योर स्टडीज एंड हाउ मच यू हैव गेन्ड थ्रू योर प्रैक्टिकल एक्सपीरियंसेस बिकॉज व्हेन वी यूज्ड टू इंटर लॉ फर्म्स एंड अदर ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस देयर वर मिक्स देयर वर अ मिक्स यू नो group of people there were there were people from nlu there were people from state universities there were people from private colleges but from the people who are are teaching us right who are under whom we were working they do not i i didn't find any kind of prejudices in their mind regarding us that if the, if, if the person or if our intern is from nlu or non nlu same goes when you comes into employ because once you are an employee what matters is what you deliver Yeah, exactly. Okay, what how how knowledgeable you are and whether you are doing the task for them. That's it. They just mm. want that you should be the better person who can mm. do their task. Yeah. That's it. So that LU and non and LU tag does not matter until and unless there is a very you know you are an exceptionally brilliant uh, employee or an exceptionally brilliant lawyer I must. Then the case could be different else there i i i don't find any kind of uh, you know uh, with this biasness or differentiation when it comes to an lu and non lu tag hmm makes sense because uh, all whatever the recruiter wants is get this wo- work done okay uh, so yeah ha huh. i mean That's i guess it's a very good sign. it's a very good sign because uh, honestly if i tell you the teachers who when when who are teaching us in an lu they are the, mm. they are the same person right mm. Mm. they once they teach us in the nlu and if, suppose they switch and they get some better package in some other universities they get into private colleges and teach they teach them the same way so yeah. it's it's a kind of a cocoon for the outer world that's you know this is a nlu and this is a non nlu student or such thing but internally if you ask for many law graduates from both the both the streams like nlu and non they will tell you the re- reality how it is mm mm-hmm. mm Okay, so I uh, guess I won't. Have, I might not be offending an LU graduates, but no, no, so that's yeah. true. I mean, I totally agree. Uh, and this is the behavior of most of the professionals who are into the industry. They just want want their work done. Uh, usually, yeah, people true. won't. Uh, but I have also heard uh, stories from people where they are being discriminated. But okay, let's not go over yeah, that because I, that will take yeah. a lot of time. Uh, discuss because if, if, if those arguments will come, I will take the names of those I know guys and those you know law scholars who have yeah, yeah, who have yeah. passed. And just they are not even from five year law. Like if you talk <laughs> about Ram Jethmalani or Harish Salve, they, at the, in their time and at their time that there was no an LU. So <laughs> exactly. <it's> different. <laughs> you need to arrange a very different interview for this yeah this, yeah, this, yeah. This actually you know whatever well known lawyers we know most of them are not from any nlu <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay cool um so we were talking about your work and internships so ha huh, you're talking yeah. about the re- recruitment process is it the same in other companies insurance sectors and also other like com- com- companies in general Uh, see when it comes to uh, recruitment uh, in insurance companies in general insurance companies it's a very consolidated on very very you know uh, defined system they if there is any vacancy they just publish in either in their website or in their linkedin channel and you need to apply and hmm. if they will find your cv suitable they will try to contact you they will conduct your interviews they will ask they will test your knowledge they will test your experience and whether the, the most important thing which they test whether you are you know uh, sustainable enough in the organization for a longer time and uh, if you tick all the boxes you are in hmm, hmm, hmm. so it's, a, it's not that uh, kind of a difficult to get into it you just need to be aware you just need to be updated with what's going around and you know what uh, whether is there any are there kind of openings in your insurance companies and if you would like if you ever get to know about it you just apply and they will try to you know connect you only if they will find you suitable okay okay yeah. so you told me that you were interested in constitution and then also in media laws uh, i would just yeah. wanted to know what type of internship did you do in your college days see in in, in our college in my college specifically hmm. the uh, all uh, 10 or 12 internships program were defined like they were predefined that in at the in the in the first 
semester we have to intern under a under uh, some ngo in the second yes. internship we have to work under some district court lawyer in the third internship we can either go to district court lawyer or a high court lawyer and in other later stages we can go to go to law firm or some supreme court or where where wherever we want hmm. so we uh, so that really helped us that because in at the grassroots level we have, we got to know that how these ngos work and how these you know non profit organizations who uh, pursue these kind of works for welfare how they function and then we starting from that district court and then high court and then supreme court and then organization so it was a mixed experience and that's why and the whole purpose the intent of this program was that the, each and every law student should have experience of each every field one should not be you know have there should not be such uh, experiences that you have only one kind of experiences of law firm and you do you know nothing about how these lawyers in the district court work so hmm. that's why it helped it, it helped us in overall grooming and it gave us that much needed exposure so so in my internships were generally district courts and then followed by alabaz high court take delhi high court and then we interned in fikki and then i i also worked for red cross indian red cross society so it was a very mixed experiences of internship personally i didn't intern anywhere in my college i just did only one internship that to in bombay high court for two months that's it i didn't do any other internship uh i can understand the confused look <laughs> from your side uh because it is actually uh, expected and it is very good if uh, like law students work because they get the experience and they know things uh which i came to know after i started working <laughs> okay so, uh, there there uh, if you talk like if 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 you allow me to uh, be little bit frank sure 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 it's not in internship it's just not about the practical experiences you are getting it's more about you know being a law student you are getting that independence to live in any different city for example yeah delhi yeah. has been a very you know hot famous place for interns basically mm-hmm. here in north Mm-hmm. so they people you know used to go in groups and they used to stay together and in week day uh, in weekends and after their office hours they used to roam around and try different stuff in delhi cp and you know visiting chandni chowk and try different kind of north indian food so these kind kind of experiences were also very important for a law student so uh, just not praise our college colleges for you know invoking us for internships the praise also goes for that instinct of you know getting that freedom and independence and you know having good exp- good time with our friends so it's the overall impact of all such experiences that yeah, yeah you, us, completely uh, you also get to learn a lot of things while you know going to intern somewhere and all uh, but that yeah. didn't apply to me because i was in mumbai and all the internships were available in mumbai itself so but i was not aware of it uh, that's a different story and that's the reason i started budding lawyers <laughs> afterwards that's, so that's that really others nice. don't do the same mistakes <laughs> oh yeah, i guess it's, it's a really nice because uh, at least at least you had that freedom of i don't know if uh, if, if we here here and people really get that chance to pursue what they really want they are so much engrossed in law so uh, i really appreciate you this particular channel where you know bring different sort of people with different different fields and they talk about their experiences that's yeah, a very good thing that's the idea thanks okay let's move on um okay let's talk about a work uh, in these insurance companies uh, so mm-hmm. whatever we are talking about is it's quite similar to most of the private companies the work you do but uh, okay i think you must be a better person to tell me what exactly do did you do uh, while you were working okay fine see there is a big difference between how we work in companies and how things are being taken over in the insurance uh, in law firm hmm. here we are law officers and we are responsible towards the higher management Hmm. and we need to deal with our panel advocates in throughout the state as i was uh, i was in charge of haryana so my work and my responsibility responsibility was to look after all the cases of shriram which were pending in the you know uh, in the court mct courts and consumer courts 
and i need to coordinate and i need to look upon my lawyers who are work, who are working under our umbrella as a as our panel lawyers so they were the one who used to represent us in the court and we we law officers were the one who who were answerable to our higher management for our lawyers how they were so we need to monitor we need to check their uh, their plans and what kind of defenses they are taking and whether that defense would be uh, you know suitable for us and whether that that defenses or that particular set of pleadings will lead us to in a better uh, position outcome or whether we can win, yeah whether we we could win that claim or not hmm. so our work was a bit different from advocates uh because we we are we, we used to look after our advocates who were who were in who were in our panel and secondly uh in in house counsel it's a mix of law plus managerial task it's not solely a law it's not solely a managerial position it's a mix of both that's mm-hmm. why we we are called legal managers in companies when you talk to any law person they the the designation which they get is a legal managers or assistant legal managers and national legal managers and na- ultimately national legal head so mm. we need to manage our law cases and also we need to we need we need to have a, a one eye on how that law things or that legal proceedings are being happening so mm. so it's a what, mix what, of what type of uh, matters you were usually dealing with and in which courts were they dealt So uh, in 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 see in general insurance companies it generally insurance claims uh, mm. where in every district and uh, as per motor vehicles act every district has a MACT mm. MACT is motor accident claim tribunal and if in case any accident happens and any claim uh, used to be used to file against us against the company in the MACT we used to you know look investigate that case that how that particular thing happened whether the accident is genuine and whether that claim is really as per the provisions of law or whether uh, whether it's a suitable because macd is governed uh, is you know dealt by, by motor vehicles act and motor vehicles act is a welfare legislation hmm. so after all our ground work being done and we used to send our investigators who used to investigate the claims and you know surveyors who used to survey the vehicle whether how things are done so that what that that used to be our first stage in second stage we need to go through the police documents like first information report charge sheet and who are the who are the witnesses who are being cross examined by our lawyer and then we used to frame an opinion and then we used to decide that whether we going to defend this case or whether we going to pay for pay the claim because if, if if all grounds were genuine there is no point of defending the case since uh, like till the last stage hmm. so that was our decision that was where our law that our legal uh, uh, what you said that our legal ana- analytical mind used to comes in used to come into picture and we used to decide whether now now what next whether we going to defend it or whether we going to pay for it so that was our task so once we used to we have framed an opinion and okay fine we are going to pay this claim we used to, we just uh, we used to just inform our lawyers okay fine that's fine we're going to pay for it and just dispose of this case just uh, appear in court and just tell that uh, just admit before the judge that the company is ready to pay the claim claim so that was our task okay so that's I, how insurance companies were i I'd, i'd also heard that, uh, that there are also matters in consumer tribe uh, consumer forums also right see uh, there is a two things in, in when it comes to insurance there are two kind of insurance claims one is third party and another one is own damage okay uh, so third par- third party insurance are generally where any third person get injured because of any accident happened or the death happen of, of any third person from that accident that claim falls under the purview of third party claim second one is the own damage claim if that for example if any car or any vehicle get damaged like it got damaged very brutally and you know all that gate crashes and headlights it got banged through some pillar or something so that is a own damage case own own damage means you damage your car by your by yourself so do there are do there is a differentiation of a claim so if 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 any claimant would not be satisfied with our claim they will file a claim or a complaint in consumer forum when it comes to own damage but if it would be it would be on the 
if it would consist of the third party claim they will file a claim in MACT that is motor accident claim tribunal so there was a difference in these two problems okay and you were only talking about this uh, insurance related to accidents but uh, what about medical insurances the or other types of uh, insurances for example uh, medical uh, yeah yeah hmm. yeah i had also uh, heard not only heard i had taken this insurance when i bought a new mobile around 4 5 years ago uh, so did, did they had such products too they definitely had such products but that wasn't uh, falls under the purview of our or it does not used to fall under the ambit of our our, uh, our portfolio we were the in charge of the motor okay insurance Mm-hmm. This this health thing that you're talking about, it comes in the health insurance. They had a different department, but of course, the health insurance also it, it also uh, is a, is a, it's also a kind of insurance. Not only this health, there is also kind of a machinery insurance and uh, you know house insurance, jewelry insurance. So there was the head this 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 particular you know the field is very broad when it comes to insurance. Yeah, and uh, you can so insure your shop, your uh, you know you, uh, your jewelry, your uh expensive watches mm. uh, you know everything a n number of things because insurance is a very uh, broad subject and post this i guess in march 2020 uh, parliament has made passed uh, have you know they have passed an amendment uh, they have amended our insurance bill where they have uh, increased the foreign direct investment in insurance sector from 49% to 74% i guess uh, now the even foreign insurance companies will come and you know they will also invest in our country so insurance sector is, is going to be very the growth is going to be very uh, yeah, huge in coming time so basically there were departments for each type of uh, insurance and you were yeah, only see, dealing with the motor yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we see the diff- see the thing is it, it depends on different companies because there are some companies who deal all the matters together and hmm. there are as other companies who for the you know for a better management of the work they bifurcated their their department or as per the policies like motor policy would be done by a one legal officer and mm-hmm. as another legal officers would be you know dealing and by law officers are required in motor accident because when motor, any accident happens the case is generally filed right by the police right so the right. law lawyer role appears from that point onwards if any death or injury happens in case mm-hmm. of health insurance or other insurance which you are talking about then it would only it would be only a consumer matter and in consumer right. for, courts you are aware of that even the even the consumer can appear by themselves there is no need of a the appear, appearance of a lawyer is not necessity yeah company require that legal team specifically in such cases where there is involvement of police and you know investigation and for the motor insurance there is a specific law that is motor vehicles act which talks about mct claims and how how these things are mm-hmm. going to be governed so mm-hmm. that's why the role of lawyers are more important when it comes to motor accident because of course to be very frank there are lots of fraud happening in the in the in you know in, in reality because mm-hmm. there are uh, implantation is a very common thing where you know any normal accident used to be portrayed as a motor accident so that the company can you know the company can be bound to pay as per uh, as per the law so that's why we are required as a law officers we used to you know investigate and reach to the grassroots of the case and find whether the, there is a, there should not be any malafide intentions of the parties or for the claimants who are claiming the claiming the amount from us hmm. right 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 okay um uh, did you learn anything like new uh, while you were working there which you were not kind of expecting that you will get to know about these things here yeah i thought okay before i left my insurance sector i was of this opinion that it was solely going to be you know that lawyer thing you know that whatever we learn we will apply work uh, you know that legal acumen and will think like some hard shot lawyer who used to mm. like apply our mind but technically this thing does not happen in reality and uh, that's that's i guess it's a one kind of a demerit that when it comes to companies it's very different when it comes to litigation in litigation you have that freedom like of course i should i should make it very clear there are pros and cons in every field but when mm-hmm. it comes to litigation and if you are practicing independently you have that freedom to you know uh, take your decisions by yourself and as per your 
legal understanding but when it comes to, when it comes to companies you are bound by your management and what your management is asking you to do so there have been instances where we were of the different opinion and our management have to be in a they they have to be in a very different set of mind their opinion were different from us so then we used to decide whether we need, we are going to follow our instincts or what we, what has been asked by our management so that was the thing which i wasn't expecting at that time and i wasn't prepared of so maybe that's why the things happened accordingly hmm. so what uh, decision you used to take usually in such a situation did you agree to what the management says or what you feel is right see i left the insurance sector so i guess it's it's very much clear that what i took what decision i took and uh, see and if, if whosoever the watching this video i need to tell this very clear when it when you have chosen law as a career law cannot be stagnant you know law is a very dynamic by nature and if i ask you a difference between culpable homicide and murder you can explain it in a one way another person can explain explain it in another way hmm. so that's why law you can there is a no set rules when it comes to law or interpreting law Inter, you know there is a very it's a very dynamic field hmm. but when it comes to management th- there has there can be instances when you have to just follow the rule which have been laid down by the your you know your predecessor hmm. or your norm. so past. they have created this norm yeah you have hmm. to follow that norm so if so that, that's what it, it depends that what how much you gonna rely on your instinct or you just follow what you have been asked to do so so maybe that's why it, it's a very individual decision it's, it's a very you know personal approach when it comes to these things uh and another thing is that uh and it's a very it's a very personal thing i guess because there can be very different different experiences with different people if if your managers or if if your bosses would be aware of that thing they will always give you that freedom to apply your mind right hmm. so it all it all depends upon how much you are being trusted so it's, it's a very individual thing when it comes to these decisions uh maybe that's why you can inter- interpret a one law in a one way and a, another person can think of in a different way because management companies insurance companies want that their task should be done and if you are thinking from a lawyer perspective you want that justice should be done so there is a difference right mm-hmm. whether you are looking for the justice or whether you are looking for that case should be disposed of so mm-hmm. that you can show in your data that okay now we have just some 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 or maybe very we have disposed of, of so many cases and so many cases are yeah. left and every, we every company hmm. right yeah right. because every company every company wants that their claim data should be very minimal so mm-hmm. they at times they might not be thinking from the justice, justice perspective there are there is a there is one company i i will not take the name but if 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 they are asked to pay in an unjustified manner they they never hesitate in appealing in a higher court they they go to the supreme court but there are certain companies who just who afraid of going to the high court because of course they just want their case to be disposed of so there is a difference in and it all depends on your managers and your your bosses what they want from hmm so yeah that's and it. and from this i also understand why you left the job and started litigation uh, but that is one reason are there any other reasons too to, for starting into litigation and leaving this job not more into litigation i'm more towards studies and litigation at at times but the the reason is very different because see uh, if if you are more into books if you are more if you have chosen law post your 12th or post your graduation for whatsoever reason if that law thing have attracted you if if law thing have made you you know going to get crazy for those law novels and mm-hmm. that uh, interest towards cross examination chief chief examinations and how that court proceedings are being done if if you have interest in that thing you will always feel curtailed when your independence would be questioned okay but if you have chosen law from that perspective that you know you want one stable job and we are at the at the month and you just get the salary then your approach would be different for sure so it's 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 a it's a very personal approach when it comes to that what you actually want 
there are there is a possibility that you wanted something at one point of time and now you want different things so one should and when it comes to these professional decisions one should never lie to himself Hmm. Because at times, what law student or I, I am aware of the certain facts that what law student make that mistake, they try to you know maybe there are certain reasons where they don't want certain things to happen, but then they 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 feel afraid of taking any tough decisions. So one should never be afraid of taking tough decisions because at the end, what matters is your sanity of mind and your professional satisfaction. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. True. Yeah, mm-hmm. and law is a very varied, varied, you know, very varied field. Mm-hmm. You can do n number of things when it comes to True. law as a profession. So, mm-hmm. one should by the way, by you you were talking about novels and also ha- were you also fond of such novels? Can you tell us something about that? In the initial in, in the initial years of our college, there were they, when there were no CPC or you know jurist students to, mm-hmm. to haunt us. We were more. Mm-hmm. towards the book when you know hindi novels uh, i remember uh, we were taught hind swaraj by mahatma gandhi in our english subject mm-hmm. for our you know that argumentative skills they it covered all that and, uh, and specifically gandhi ji was a very important part of our syllabus because we were in ahmedabad when our colleges were happening and we were studying so in ahmedabad only that great trial of mahatma gandhi happened if you remember that thing where he mm-hmm. he was being questioned by british law and he gave the best arguments and he you know just broke their logic so so that was that's where our uh, interest towards literature and this argue this anal- analytical literature got got us and we started reading about it and knowing about it and movies specifically and mm. so maybe that's where we got attracted to all these things i think there's also a book written by gandhi uh, mr gandhi is law and lawyers right have you heard yes. about it? yes have yes. you read have you read it i i haven't read it but uh, there was a book roses in december there's one roses of my favorites <laughs> Yes, yes. So I remember when we were in our third year, uh, the the book launch session happened in Gujarat High Court, and we were all invited. And the son of M C Chagla, Mr. Iqbal Chagla, came and he delivered a lecture, and so all that sort of thing happened. And we remember so from that, and, and we were very lucky that our college gave us such opportunities to you know get involved in to be a part of such events where we inculcated our uh, interest. Mm-hmm. towards such things to towards books and poetry and also for a very fruitful experience we had a very good time in andabad hmm. great okay uh over to our last question please share an incident yeah. from your career which is very memorable to you uh from your career like like yes. from college or from ha so uh to be specific uh, it would be better if it's uh, from your legal like when you started working but if you think you have more uh, memorable incidents in your college days also you can share that not not in uh, compulsion okay. Okay. with that so uh, there was one such incident happened when i was working i was you know the, i the, i was in a bit of a discussion with my senior legal manager and uh, we were talking about certain issue that what things could be could be done and what approach we should take in certain In, in a certain point of law hmm. so he just out of you know in a very informal manner he he told me that okay okay i should we cannot take such certain certain decisions because we are just an employer and uh, i got you know silent for a for a second and i thought uh, i am registered for a bar council of uttar pradesh i have cleared my all india bar examination exam and all those certificates gives you that liberty to call yourself a lawyer hmm. so i i don't know what triggered me and i just told him ki sir i am a lawyer first and then i am employed hmm so i cannot stop thinking from lawyer's perspective hmm so hmm. at that time that that discussion got over and we have mutually decided to do something but that thing that statement of you are just an employee got you know trick you are just an employee uh, yeah you are just an employee got you know that uh, if if there is a kind Registered of a bond and you yeah you throw a stone and in all kind of waves started 
occurring in when the whole still water so that thing happened in my, that 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 thing happened in my mind and from that point of time i used to i started thinking that i don't want to be just an employee hmm. i i have spent some 5 6 years into law so i i would always love to be called as a lawyer not just an employee so maybe that gave me that uh, power to take certain tough decisions and i guess now i'm in a very better state of mind and you can see that now <laughs> it's all happy around <laughs> okay a unique one okay thank you so much ashutosh for having this conversation i enjoyed it a lot and i hope you too uh, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast if you like this episode do check out other episodes available here too and also uh, give us your feedback you can contact us on linkedin twitter instagram anywhere and if you have any questions or doubts then please write to us thank you so much for listening